Good afternoon, my YouTube viewers. It is Crystal here. I'm just here because I wanted to do another code review for you. And this particular code review I'm going to do is going to be on a Flax Auto Encoder. And I'm going to make predictions on digits that have been denoised. De and it's taken me longer to get videos out. And the reason why is because obviously I'm studying flax and there's not a whole lot written on flax on the internet. So I have to try to figure it out myself, which is taking a lot of time, you know, to study. So I haven't put out a video or a, a blog post in several days because I've been working on autoencoders. And I've been trying to fix them. And the thing is, is like when you go on the internet, basically there's lots of audio encoders on the MNIST data set. But I wanted to do an audio encoder on something different. So I got some dad got a data set off of Kaggle saying noisy noisy single digit captcha images which is more difficult than it is on the MNIST data set because if you're making an uh, auto encoder using the MNIST data set, what you do is you download the MNIST data set off of TensorFlow and then you put a little bit of noise in it. And then after that, you send it through the auto encoder and the auto encoder is supposed to denoise it. But um, I couldn't do that in this instance because every everything you look at, all the code that you look at, it's all on the MNIST data set. It's not on anything different. If you're lucky, you might be able to get, there's another data set called CAPTCHA or something like that. But they don't have anything any, anything original. And so I wanted to do something original. And so that's why I'm using the noisy single digit capture images. And so we will commence with the code review after I have sort of like explained to you what I was doing. So the first thing we do is we create our Jupyter Notebook. And our Jupyter Notebook is in Kaggle and it's stored in my Kaggle account. And I will give you a link to the um, Jupyter Notebook in the description box below this uh, video. And then so after we created our um, Jupyter Notebook, what we want to do is we want to devise our problem statement. So we're going to denoise the images of the digits that we're going to get. And then what we're going to do is we're going to import our libraries. So we've got quite a few libraries to import because we're going to be working on uh, images. So we're going to import NumPy as MP, which creates NumPy arrays, and it also performs numeric computation. We're going to import Pandas as PD, which creates data frames and processes data. We're going to import OS, which goes into the operating system. We're going to import path live, so we're going to create the path where all our images are going to be stored. For matplotlib import pyplot splt, so that's data visualization. For matplotlib.image, import matplotlib.image as img, so that's where you're going to visualize images. Import seaborn as sns, so you need to have seaborn as well. Uh, to uh, visualize the images, import pil.image as image. So that is going to also do image processing. Import cv2, which you're going to use that for your computer vision. From skimage.filters, import filters. So you're going to need that for your image is processing as well. Then we're going to import JAX which is going to create your neural network, import jax.numpy as jmp. So that's like an API that's very similar to numpy, but it's supposed to work a lot better than numpy. So we're going to import flags, which 
create your neural networks and it's built on top of JAX. So you have to have JAX installed to be able to use Flux. Import Flux.Linen as NN. So Flux.Linen is what's going to give you your neural network. Import Flux.Training, import train state. That's another um, function used in um, with the neural network from flex.training.common utils import get metrics one hot. So that those are other functions that you're going to need in flex. Import optex, which <coughs> excuse me, which is going to create your you're going to select your optimizers from the optex library. So if you you may not know this, but flex and JAX don't use the Optim part of the library anymore. Now, you'll see a lot of old code where they say Optim. Well, that's deprecated. So now, if you want to select an optimizer, you have to select the optimizer from the Optex library. And then from sklearn.modelselection, import trying to split. That's to split your data set. Now we're going to retrieve the images using the OS library, and so we've got quite a few images, PNG images, so we're going to go all the way down now that we have, uh, we're, we're retrieving them from the operating system. So we're just um, trying to get all of these images. So after we've got all our images, what we do is we define our directory path and we're going to use the path live to do that. And then after we've defined our directory path, we're going to define the classes. And so you're going to have nine classes, one for each digit. And what I did was I just decided we were only going to have 50 examples of each digit because I didn't want to crash the system. And because that happens to me in Kaggle sometimes, if you're working on a really large data set, then what will happen is the system will crash. So in order to keep the system from crashing, I decided to have only 50 examples of each number or each class. And so you got a total of 450 images. Whereas if I didn't shorten it, then it would be a lot more. So now we're going to print random images of digits. And I decided whenever I first did the program, uh, I had like a random image of each digit for each class. But I decided not to do that. I decided just to do a random, in, random image of number five, digit number five. And so we've done that. And then we're using CV2 to create the random, to, to make, uh, sorry, excuse me, I'm tongue tied to view the image. So the rand five is the random number, and so you're going to print rand five. That was 40, so you, your random number is 40. And then now rand image equals img dot im read five rand five. So five is going to be your, um, different your your different data frame and ran five is going to be number 40 of that data frame so you'll be looking at number 40 so plt .i show five image so you're going to plot the five image and then you're going to show it and then what you're going to do is you're going to make it gray gray equals cv2.cvt color 
5 image comma cv2 dot color bgr to gray so that's going to be bgr to gray so we had to do that and the reason why we had to do that is because this um auto encoder it's not working on it only works on grayscale it doesn't work on color but i'm going to do some more investigation and see if i can make an find an auto cutter auto encoder that actually works on colors and then we use a gaussian blur to smooth it and then we divide it and scale it to 255 and then we make it we use the filters to sharpen it and then we're going to show it and then we're going to show the smooth show the division and show the sharp so this is what you get this is the first image this is what the image looks like in the data frame and so basically it's got a lot of noise in it probably too much noise that's why in Kaggle I mean I'm the only one who had a notebook on it and nobody else had any notebooks on it I guess people decided it was too blurry and this is the smooth one I think it's the smooth one Let's see what it says Yeah, it's the smooth one division in the sharp. So this is your smooth one, and you can't even make the five out in the smooth one. This is your division. You can make the five out in the division. And this is the sharp. There's not even anything in the sharp. You can't even make out what's in the sharp. And so I think that these images probably had too much noise in them to be able to work with but I worked with it and now we're going to define the data frame so your data frame has got um, one column for each number all the way from one to nine and then you define your labels as your labels are one column for each number as well so now we're going to use CB2 to get the shape of the image and the shape of the image is 111 by 263 by 3. The 3 is letting me know that it's a color image. So, now we're going to define our X and our Y variables. So, X, Y equals two blank arrays for a label, comma, images in DF frames dot items. For image in images, img equals cv2 dot im read string image gray. Now we have to make it gray because the um, auto encoder won't work if it's in color. Believe me, I've been working on it for a long time to try to get it to work in color, and I couldn't figure out how to do it. But I will do some more studying and see if I can figure out how to do it gray equals cv2 dot cvt color img comma cv2 dot color bgr to gray we're going to resize it to 28 by 28 and i would like to say that i tried to resize it to 100 by 100 to see if it would work better and it didn't work better so i'm just going to keep it at 28 to 28 the x we append resize images Y we pin the label and then you print X and Y so you've got 450X and 450Y. Now we're going to make a denoise to dive for, um, a um, variable that's the denoise. So the denoise has more um, lines of code in it so you have to take the image and you have to denoise it. So the four the two loops are the same format as the eggs except for the fact that after you gray it out you smooth it out using Gaussian and then you make a division and scale it to 255 and then you make a sharp and then you make another sharp and then after you've done all that to denoise the image 
you resize it to 28 by 28. And as I said, I did try to make it 100 by 100 and it, it didn't work any better. So I just decided to keep it 28 to 28. Then you have XD noise and image append resize image and Y append DF labels labels. So you append the labels. So now you've got denoise X and Y. And again, you've got 450 X's and 450 Y's. So we find out how many classes we have in the Y variable and by using the np.unique function and it's nine classes. Now what we have to do is we have to convert the X and the Y variables to Jack's arrays, which we have done. We've normalized the um, We've normalized the variables, the X and the XD noise variable, by dividing it by 255, and that's just basically what they do with images. I had previously normalized it with min max scalar, but I just thought, well, since I'm having problems with this, I'll just use the FET format that everybody else uses. Now we're going to reshape our images. So X and X denoise, we're going to reshape it to X, the length of X, 28, 28, 1, and both X and denoise de X. Now we're going to display our images. And so we've got a function called display image that I took from Kaggle and I modified it. So if this is modified function that I got off Kaggle. And so this is your denoise, this is your image, and you can barely make it out. You can just barely make out the numbers. And so I think that these no noisy images were, it was too much, too much for the autoencoder. But since I spent such a long time working on this, I thought, well, I'm going to go ahead and make a code review on it because once you understand how to do the code review, you can try a different data set and maybe a different data set will work better. I know it works on the MNIST data set, but I didn't want to use the MNIST data set because they just took that off TensorFlow and I wanted to make it a real world problem. So now we display our denoise problems, denoise um, images, and you can see you can't even make out what the images are. So now what we're going to do is we're going to use train set split to split the X and the Y variable up into training and testing sets. And then we're also going to use train test split to split the denoised X and Y into training and testing sets as well, denoise. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take the X variable and the X denoise variables, and we're going to convert those to Jack's arrays. So they are converted to Jack's arrays. Now we're going to create the autoencoder. The autoencoder was made in flags. It has an encoder section and a decoder section, and it returns the decoded code. You have a function to define the loss. So we're defining the loss in the autoencoder. And now what we're going to do is we're going to train the model. So you've got a function saying def create train state. You've got another function that says train def train step. And now we've got our train epoch. So, and this is where it's going to train each epoch and we've got a function called eval model so you're going to evaluate the model so it does actually give you predictions so predictions equals autoencoder dot apply params dot noisy test images and it says display test images and display uh, predictions and now this is where we actually train the data. So you've got a learning rate of 0 0.001, 0 
a batch size of 32. You might want to change it to a batch size of 4, 64, but I just thought if I had a smaller batch size, it might work better. Number of epochs is 10. Going to create a random number uh, using Jax's random number generator. And then we're going to have three random numbers. You have your state is going to be create train state with the initial random number generator and LR, which is your learning rate. And then for epoch and range, one to num epochs plus one. So there's only 10 epochs because we wanted it to work quickly. You know, if you have more epochs, you'll get a better score but then it takes a lot longer as well so you can always put more epochs in there so state equals train epoch brackets state comma x denoise train comma x train batch size epoch shuffle rng that's your random number generator and so test size equals lin x denoise test indices equals jacks dot random dot choice eval rng test size and then 10 batch test indice images equals x test indices batch noisy test images equals x denoise test indices and then so now we evaluate it with state dot params batch test images and batch noisy test images and so now we have the 10 epochs and you can see the noise in the 10 epochs and you see that the noise has gradually decreased for the number of epochs so if you wanted to you can increase the epochs and see if you get a better score so the top row is your um, test images I think I think the top row is the test images and the bottom row is the predictions and you can see you can just barely make it out but what I would recommend this is what I would recommend is that you try a different data set I mean obviously this noisy digits data set was too noisy and so if you try a different data set then that might help it might give you better images but the code is fine the code works fine there's nothing wrong with the code itself because I worked hard enough on it to try to get it to work but I suspect that the images were just too noisy and you can barely make them out so I'm going to go ahead and close this code review because I went over the code review and what I would recommend that you do is try a different data set. Just try a different data set. Um, and see if you can denoise it. And you don't. What they did with the MNIST data set was they, caught, they had the MNIST digits. And then they added noise to the MNIST digits. And then they did it that way. But I just wanted to do something original because if you look on the internet there's loads of auto encoders using the MNIST data set but the MNIST data set is something that you got off of um, TensorFlow and then what are you going to do if you have a real world problem so I was trying to use a real world problem so that's what you've got the code now if you want to try it with a different data set then you can see how you go see see how you get on and um definitely let me know so i would like to thank all my subscribers for supporting my channel if you like my video please like subscribe and share and i look forward to making more videos for you in the future